the Las Vegas odds have shifted about who goes number two in the NBA draft, and that tells us a lot about who the Pelicans may have to deal with. Plus, lightning round on NBA draft prospects you need to know. It's the Wednesday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at NOLA Jake. On Twitter, here with y'all on this Wednesday, one more day until the NBA draft. And we've got some big news with the Vegas odds. And yeah, that tells us something big time, especially with recent history. I'll explain coming up here in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Make sure Locked On Pelicans is your first listen today and every day, bringing you draft coverage, trade rumor coverage, everything you need to know about this Pelicans team and franchise Monday through Friday, completely free like no one else is doing. If you're an everydayer, you're informed, you know what's going on around the team, what to maybe expect on Thursday. And if you're not an everydayer and want to support the channel, Become one. Listen Monday through Friday and comment down below on YouTube. I'll share the draft day plans here also coming up in a little bit. I'll tell you right now. We're going to go live Thursday night. The Basically, the moment the Pelicans make their pick, we're going to hop on. Or if any other live news happens during that, we're going to go live here. So make sure you are subscribed to the Locked On Pelicans YouTube channel. So today, I looked at... The FanDuel app on my phone, they're the official sports betting partner of the NBA and of the Locked On Podcast Network, and I noticed something was different, and that it was Scoot Henderson is now the favorite to go number two overall. It had been Brandon Miller before that. Right now, Scoot is minus 145, while Brandon Miller is plus 100. Might not seem like a big deal. You know, Vegas sets these lines, these numbers to kind of entice action on both sides. And given that it had previously been Scoot Hend- or Brandon Miller, maybe this is their way of like, cool, let's even it out and give us like less risk here. But this is significant if you go back a year. And when everyone's been saying, you know, Charlotte's more interested in Brandon Ingram, Charlotte's more interested in Brandon Ingram, Charlotte wants to take Brandon Miller number two instead of Scoot Henderson for fit or whatever reason. We've heard all of this before. Last year, for two months, it was that the Orlando Magic were going to take Jabari Smith Jr. number one. He was by far the betting favorite. Then something like 15 hours before the NBA draft, basically like once the clock switched over to midnight on Thursday, 12.01, all of a sudden the betting line massively changed. And it was Paolo Bancaro being the favorite to go number one overall. And then a little bit before the draft, we heard it was going to be Bancaro going number one overall. A guy that I don't even think worked out for Orlando, maybe. And that was who they said they had targeted all along. And all the stuff about Jabari Smith Jr. was misinformation designed to throw teams off. Why at the top of the draft? I don't really know. It doesn't really matter or impact them at that point. They're in control. But that's what happened. And Vegas got it ahead of time. It happened before the general news kind of leaked out there that, yes, for sure, it's going to be Paolo Bancaro. I remember waking up on draft day and people kind of talking about it, being like, odds are different now. And it's like, oh, that probably means something. So seeing the odds change that now Scoot Henderson is the betting favorite when he wasn't before, are we in for a similar thing? I don't want to say for sure. There's no way to know that, but... Vegas doesn't like to lose money and Vegas doesn't like to be wrong. So I do think this is actually kind of a big deal. And what this means for the Pelicans is making a deal with Portland is probably unlikely and you're going to have to probably trade with Charlotte if you want Scoot Henderson. You got to get him with the second overall pick if, well, they're going to draft him with the second overall pick. Or you can't risk another team jumping up. It's always kind of been Charlotte as the favorite if you want to get Scoot Henderson. And I like that less 
than trading with Portland. Portland, I don't know if they're ever going to be a true title contender, even if you trade them Zion Williamson or Brandon Ingram. And I also think it would be easier to make a deal with Portland because they're a more desperate team. Did you see the latest rumor from them today? They're getting ready to put together an aggressive package for Bam Adebayo. And go listen to the Locked On NBA podcast because I think that is one of the worst, dumbest, stupidest, most pathetic trade rumors I have ever heard. And I explain why in that show. Basically, it means they can't trade that pick. So they're putting this other stuff out there to be like, Damian Lillard, we tried. They're desperate. That team is desperate. So you could get your boy Scoot Anderson if he fell to three with Portland and maybe get more from them, not give up as much. Puts New Orleans in a much better position. But trading with Charlotte, they have the cards. They have the leverage. And it seems they really value that second overall pick. And Scoot Anderson's the shiny new thing. Everyone I talk to who covers poor, uh, Charlotte wants them to take Scoot Henderson over Brandon Miller. Everybody does. Doesn't mean they'll do that. But it also feels like you shouldn't trust all of these like very, you know, when something's like this obvious and pointing to this thing so much, this time of year, I don't believe that. Doesn't mean it won't happen, but I'm not going to believe that, especially based on past history and what we've seen. Otherwise, you wouldn't have had Jabari Smith as the betting, Jabari Smith Jr. as the betting favorite. It would have been Paolo Bancaro Overall, and Ben Caro, th that draft was closer than, say, this one, in my opinion. Ben Caro, I think, was probably like the consensus number one overall pick, like 65 to 70 percent of people had him on, you know, at top of their big boards or thought he was the best prospect. If anyone was like, no, it's Jabari Smith Jr., they might have also been elevating him because they thought he was going to be taken number one overall and wanted to be correct with their big board. You know, oh, everyone's saying he's going to go number one overall. I better put him number one on my big board so I look smarter. I actually had Ben Caro number one on mine. And so I do think that he was the best player. Most people actually thought that. And so the odds changed, like I said, right before. So this changing a little bit closer, and I'm recording this Tuesday night, so it's not like the same thing as changing Wednesday night into Thursday morning. This is more changing Tuesday afternoon going into Wednesday. So there's still plenty of time. But also, could that mean they're factoring in a trade? Could those be factored into the odds? Maybe they know New Orleans is going to get a deal done. Maybe they know something we don't, and Vegas always does, it feels like. So seeing this, I think, is eye-opening here for what it could mean for New Orleans. And it means you got to trade with Portland. Uh, you got to trade with Charlotte instead of Portland. Let me know what you think down below in the comments on YouTube. Is this a big deal? Is it not? Is this just Vegas trying to even things out a little bit? So coming up next, we got four prospects for you. They're listed on the right side of the screen here. Noah Clowney, Jalen Hood, Shafino. Let's look at them coming up next. And then after that, Kaysen Wallace and Chris Murray. These are four prospects you need to know because if the Pelicans stick at 14. I think these guys are on their radar. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we get to that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by BetterHelp. How much time do you spend on yourself in a given week versus how much time you spend on other people or even just work and just not looking internally? And how do you try and balance all of that? It's really easy to get caught up in what everyone else needs from you, whether that's family, friends, and you just never take a moment to think about what you need for yourself. So when we spend all of our time given, it can feel us stretched thin and burned out. And therapy can give you the tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. I've used BetterHelp. I don't have time to go to an office to sit down and talk to someone and just get a different perspective. Hear what an expert says I need to try and work on and how I can make my life better because look... We all don't need to be as stressed and as anxious and everything like that as we are. And there's people that can help with it. BetterHelp means I can just log online, meet with my therapist, chat, come away feeling better and know what I need to do going forward. So if you're thinking of starting BetterHelp or thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. And just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And you can switch therapists at no at any time for no additional charge. So find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA to get started today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA to get started. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday. 
completely free, breaking down everything you want to know about what's going on with this Pelicans team, talking about all things Scoot Henderson. We're going to look to free agency next week, too. We got the draft coverage here, a complete breakdown of whatever the Pelicans do on draft night or before draft night or right after draft night. So make sure you're subscribed. Become an everydayer if you want to support the channel and listen, watch Monday through Friday. Or you can comment down below on YouTube if you want to keep supporting Locked On Pelicans. So let's get back into draft talk. We need a break from talking about Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram and Scoot Henderson trades. And even if those might happen, the odds of them happening are still slim. I wouldn't say there's a greater than 50% chance that any sort of deal gets done because these deals are hard. And you've heard me talk about that here if you're an everydayer on Locked On Pelicans. So the most likely scenario, most likely, not one that will happen, not a prediction or anything like that. The most likely scenario is that the Pelicans pick someone at 14. I don't think they're going to end up trading it for a veteran just due to their salary cap situation. I was on Fox 8, their overtime show here in New Orleans on Tuesday night. Might not have gone live by the time you're watching the show because I'm going to be posting it around the same time. They had asked me that and I said, you know, I think the likely scenarios are, there are the three scenarios that could happen. You trade up for Scoot. You pick someone at 14 or you trade down. And we've looked at some trade down targets. And some of these guys here are that we're going to look at are them too. But let's start with a lightning round for draft prospects in these two segments. First one is Noah Clowney, a big man out of Alabama. 6'10 with a 7'2 wingspan. He's a freshman. And this guy is versatile. This is the versatile kind of big that the New Orleans Pelicans love. A lot of y'all have been looking at Naz Reed as the top free agent that you maybe want to go and get, and I don't think New Orleans is going to be able to afford him. Noah Clowney reminds me of Naz Reed a good bit. You just want a big that can kind of do it all defensively and offensively while still being a good rebounder, and Reed isn't the best offensive rebounder. I think Clowney's a little bit better than him. This is it. This is a guy that can switch defensively, can drop can be aggressive, hedge, whatever you defensive scheme you need him to do. He has the athleticism to do that, and he has an instinctual feel, I think, for the game. You watch him kind of make reads on defense and know what's going on and just kind of innately know what's going on behind him and off ball. Very smart player. And that's going to be true also when I talk about Jalen hood Shafino here in a second. Smart player that's an unproven shooter and a little bit raw offensively, but he can be a pick and roll big man. He has decent mechanics and looks like he could extend his shot beyond the three point line. And look, there's a connection with Alabama. The Pelicans have Kyra Lewis Jr. here. They've had, uh, they have Her uh, Herb Jones as well. You know, they've got an assistant coach that just went there. There seems to be a good sort of pipeline relationship between that school and New Orleans. You know, that also factors in that you have the squadron in Birmingham, very close to Tuscaloosa. So Noah Clowney probably needs to be on the radar. The ringer actually just put him at 14 in their mock draft. Makes a lot of sense, I think, for New Orleans, given everything. Raw, you know, at this pick, you don't necessarily need a guy that's going to contribute right away because I do think for the most part, barring a big shakeup, the roster's set, and is a rookie going to actually get significant minutes? No. So you can get a guy that you can play in spot minutes, maybe useful in a role that also has a ton of upside, and Noah Clowney's a guy that's been jumping up draft boards a little bit. Let's also look at Jalen Hood Shafino, freshman combo guard out of Indiana, six foot four with a 6'10 wingspan. He is not someone I love at 14. I think this is a guy that I would be okay with the Pelicans trading down and taking in the mid 20s. He's a very good pick and roll guard. You see him run the pick and roll exceptionally well and know how to manipulate a defense a little bit like that. So if you're looking for the Pelicans to add more of a primary ball handler that can open things up in the pick and roll mainly for others, Jalen Hood Shafino could definitely be that guy. He also has a mid-range shot to his game, and that's something that I very much like about him. You see him start to get downhill in the pick and roll, stop, pull up, shoot, and that I do think is a very useful skill. He kind of does the majority of his work from that mid-range free throw line area. How does that work spacing-wise on this Pelicans team? I'm, I'm not quite sure. I think that could be an actual problem, but that's something you can also figure out later. He's not going to get that many minutes. 
you know, he's aggressive getting to the rim. So it's not just mid range. He's confident in doing so, even if he's not great at finishing around the rim, but it allows him to draw a lot of fouls. He's also a very good defender and pesky defender, and he'd fit right in for what the Pelicans want to do on that side of the ball. The problem with him is that he's an inconsistent shooter. 33.3% from three last season on almost four attempts per game. His handle also isn't great. You're going to have some turnovers if he's running your offense, particularly as he adjusts to the NBA level. But he gets out there and he tries. And if the Pelicans are looking for hustle guys to try and you know work on their culture, he definitely fits in. So does Noah Clowney, too. I think he's more of a trade down guy. I would be okay with them taking Clowney at 14, however. What about guys like Kaysen Wallace and Chris Murray? These are names that I also think need to be on your radar. We'll talk about them coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Before we do that, though, today's episode of Locked On Pelicans is brought to you by FanDuel. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. Just go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to join today. Or if you want NBA futures, I told you the odds on... Scoot Henderson going number two. It's minus 145. Maybe you think it's going to be Miller. And all the, you know, what the reporting out there is correct. What they're saying out there is correct. Plus 100 is real good odds on that. You're, you'll, you'll make some money. You know what's going on in the NBA. So if you want to get in on the NBA futures, download the app. It's super easy to use. It's laid out great. You'll be able to see everything simply that you want. And... You get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Again, go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to sign up. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We're here Monday through Friday, even in the offseason. We don't take breaks. We're here just giving you the Pelicans coverage that you want. And we will be live if you're an everydayer right after the Pelicans make their draft pick or trade on draft night and don't miss the locked on nba draft live show on thursday night pick by pick analysis from our stable of local nba hosts national reaction from our nba big board hosts they're awesome and live check-ins from inside the nba draft we have like so many people there locked on nba draft live starting at 7 30 p.m eastern on the locked on nba youtube page i'll be on there hanging out for a little bit till the pelicans make their pick, then we will be going live soon after on the Locked On Pelicans YouTube page, and that'll be Friday's show. So we talked about the draft odds. We looked just now at Noah Clowney and Jalen Hood-Shafino. So let's look at a couple more targets here for the New Orleans Pelicans, and that's Kaysen Wallace out of Kentucky. Six foot two with a six eight wingspan. He's a freshman combo guard. And if you want a Drew Holiday replacement, you miss Drew Holiday on this Pelicans team and what he does, particularly defensively. Wallace is him. Wallace looks and reminds you very much of Drew Holiday. He is elite at pressuring the point of attack defensively. And though he's 6'2", he plays so much bigger than he is. You remember how Drew Holiday was able to guard big men? And big men would try and post him up, and it would always just be an absolute disaster for them. You see that in Wallace. Just defensively, you need someone on the perimeter that can do it all. That's kind of more advanced for his age. Wallace is the guy. He is not, though, a guy that you're going to ask to run your offense. This doesn't, he doesn't, you know, he's listed as a combo guard, and I'm not really sure. He's more of a two guard to me than anything else. Else, He needs to be with another primary ball handling guard. I don't know if you could run him and CJ in the backcourt and have Zion and BI out there. I think, you know, if you need your guards and you want CJ off ball, then that is, I think you need another primary ball handler with him, a guy to really take that off of his plate because he is not good at manipulating a defense, running the pick and roll and really creating for others. He's much more of a spot up shooter that just doesn't create for himself. And I think that's just not exactly what the Pelicans need. If you want him for the defense, sure. But I think you drafted Dyson Daniels for that. 
And he's a good spot up guy. You put him on the three point line, kick it out to him. He can catch the ball in some incredible spots and get into a shooting pocket and use mechanics very quickly. I like that, but he doesn't create for himself. He has a decent mid range and he's not bad at finishing around the rim, but I just don't think he's advanced enough offensively, but defensively what he can do and the three point shooting, I think still makes him a very, very intriguing draft prospect to me. Final one I want to look at is Chris Murray Jr. First old guy we kind of talked about here. Old guy, right? That's a relative term. Out of Iowa, 6'8 with a 7-foot wingspan. You want to know who he reminds you of? He reminds you of Keegan Murray, mainly because they're brothers. It's a, it's a very similar player with just less upside and not quite as good. I, I've talked about Keegan Murray a lot. That is a guy that I don't think will ever, ever make an NBA all-star game. And the Sacramento Kings took him fourth, I think it was. Was that what it was? Fifth in the top five. For a guy that I don't think has an all-star level ceiling, that seems a little bit high. But he's a solid basketball player, and you knew Keegan Murray was going to step in and just be good. Sometimes... We don't need to overthink this. Just get, you know, you can draft for ceiling and go boom or bust and all of that. Sometimes, though, you just need to get good basketball players that are going to help you. Chris Murray is a solid guy that does his job without much attention put on him. When you have, if you have, I should say, Zion Williamson, Brandon Ingram, that's the type of guy that you need. You don't necessarily need to go looking for the next super duper star. He's a good shooter. He does well cutting off ball and finding ways to be effective without the ball in his hands. And I don't think he's great in a motion offense. He struggles a little bit coming off picks and pin downs and catching the ball and shooting, you know, turning, shooting. But he does it well enough. And he's a decent pass. You know, there's not one anything you look at with him where you're like, that guy's not good there. He's a decent passer. He's a decent screen setter. He's not so spectacular or elite at anything. But you're not going to regret having a guy like Chris Murray on your team. He's older, though. He's going to be 23 his rookie year in the NBA, which at that point, honestly, really might be kind of ancient. So I think that's what's knocking him down draft boards. You don't necessarily have him going inside the top 20. But if the Pelicans feel this is a dude they really want, a guy that can really help, trade down, get him, save some money against the salary cap, too, with the way these rookie scale deals work. He's going to be a solid NBA player. Won't be spectacular. Won't be a guy that sells a lot of jerseys or anything like that. Won't be the guy to necessarily replace someone who leaves. You're not going to look at him and be like, well, we got him waiting in the wings as a breakout guy. No. But is he going to be a guy that helps you win? Yes. Is he a guy that, you know, if one day it gets too expensive and you got to let him walk, you're like, damn, that sucks. But it's not the end of the world. Like we might be saying about Trey Murphy. But you need those type of guys. Not everyone's going to be an all-star on your team. And, you know, with the success that Keegan Murray had his freshman year, is he still making threes in the Smoothie King Center right now against the Pelicans? You know, Chris Murray, his brother, who does a lot of the same things, fills a very similar role. Look, you need just guys that can contribute. He's definitely one of them. So do you like any of those players? Noah Clowney, Jalen Huchifino, Jason Wallace, Chris Murray. Would you take them at 14? Do you want to see the Pelicans trade down? And what do you think? Vegas knows about the second overall pick. Let me know in the comments down below on YouTube. So live Locked On Pelicans episode, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thursday, right after the Pelicans make a pick or if any news goes down. We'll probably go live for like 45 minutes to an hour. That'll be Friday's show. Monday, we'll probably talk a little bit more about the draft pick and then kind of shift very quickly into free agency talk because that comes right on the heels of this. So a busy next couple of days, week, two weeks here on Locked on Pelicans in the NBA. So make sure you're an everyday or never miss an episode that goes on. So subscribe and comment down below on YouTube. And as always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter. And I'll be back with y'all Thursday morning with another show. So that's tomorrow morning. And then we'll be live Thursday night with the Friday show, but we're going to go live right after the draft pick is made. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to chat with y'all live then. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube page and I'll see you all.
twice tomorrow. I'm going to hit the outro card. This was made for it, so I got to do it. <laughs>